I'm Danielle Smodrich bringing you the special report. Many of you may have heard of this new and growing realization, but what is commonly known as pesticides or herbicides can be dangerous to you and your body. Today, you will be informed of the differences between synthetic and natural chemicals and the benefits and risks of those chemicals. Now, to my colleague Kirsten Fuller on more on the stirring issue. Pesticides and herbicides are chemicals for demolishing plant, fungal, and animal pests. A huge controversy today deals with synthetic versus natural products. Organic companies are growing and people are becoming more aware of what is better for themselves and their bodies. But what really is good for them and how do herbicides and pesticides affect this issue? Did you know that pesticides can be absorbed through the skin, causing birth defects, neuropathy, and high risk of cancer? Many nutritionists believe that long-term exposure to these chemicals can cause many defects. You may be sitting at home wondering, what are the differences between synthetic and natural pesticides? Well, really, it is quite simple. A synthetic pesticide is a man-made chemical for repelling pests such as bugs and rodents, while a natural pesticide is a naturally occurring chemical that serves a similar purpose. One study showed that 99.9% .9 of the chemicals that the human body acquires are not synthetic, but in fact natural. This same study by Dr. John Tierney stated that Americans consume only 0 0.09 milligrams of synthetic pesticides per day, compared to 1,500 milligrams of natural pesticides. You may think that if you eat organic foods that you are not susceptible to pesticides. This is incorrect. Organic farmers are allowed to use many chemicals for their crops as long as they are derived from natural sources. This does not necessarily mean they are not bad for you. Keep in mind, many poisons are natural. Although we only consume 0.1% of synthetic pesticides, 90% of pesticides used today are synthetic, meaning 10% is organic. However, most of the chemicals that are applied to foods you eat are washed off. So, does water really wash off pesticides? We are here with Dr. George Weiss, an expert nutritionist from SPA 858. So do you think that the minuscule amount of pesticides residue on an average person's produce is threatening to their health? Well, again, that's a, that's a tough question to answer. Any amount of pesticide is not good for you, obviously. So, Dr. Weiss, what do you think? Does simply washing produce underwater adequately remove pesticide residue? No, uh, just plain old washing with water will not remove pesticides. You have to get a little bit more aggressive. Um, one of the best ways to do is to take, um, like, uh, liquid detergent, a mild liquid detergent and you you utilize some water and so dilute it and then wash it in in that and some fruits or certain vegetables that have a harder skin you may have to scrub a little bit and then rinse them off but you want to you want to use a, a a mild detergent if you're suspecting pesticides to kind of remove that that will help but plain old just rinsing it off helps but it's not as good as if you were to use a mild detergent there are many more synthetic herbicides than natural Thus, the chemical processing for these herbicides is more common, making it more likely that people will use synthetic over natural. What some people might not know is that some plants act like herbicides, such as the black walnut, sunflower, sagebrush, and spotted knapweed. These plants, along with some others, emit chemicals that can be harmful to other plants around them, sometimes even killing them. This particular process of plants killing other plants is called allelopathy. As we learn more and more about herbicides and pesticides, we start to realize how much they are really affecting our bodies. We consume so much food, and that food has chemicals that are harmful to our bodies. But why are we not getting as sick as some people? Do these diseases relate to your background or where you live? What are some different effects of pesticide or herbicide poisoning? Well, there's a whole host of different uh, illnesses that you can 
get from either herbicides or pesticides, the worst of which could be developing cancer. And there's uh, somewhat an increase of cancer rate in children because children are much more susceptible to pesticides because they're smaller so that the concentration of these pesticides and herbicides is much greater than it would be in an adult. Um, there are neurological issues that can develop and growth issues and hormonal issues. For instance, uh, a lot of the um, uh, poultry and, and meats contain hormones, growth hormones and other hormones which affect children, whether it's puberty or whatever else it is. So there's all these other things that can affect it. So it's very hard to say which does what, but there are very specific signs of very specific organophosphates and so on that mimic certain diseases. But overall, there's a danger of cancer, neurologic and, and endocrinological uh, uh, problems that can occur from eating. Pesticides and herbicides can cause many different forms of cancer, birth defects, and brain defects. Of course, these diseases can vary and also have other side effects. Other consequences can be long-term, such as genetic damage and making it hard or almost impossible for one to reproduce. How much pesticides would a person ingest before they were affected by the chemicals? Well, again, it depends on the size of the individual, the age of the individual. The younger you are, the less you need to be affected. So it depends on the size of the individual. It depends on how concentrated the pesticide is. So it's very difficult if you if you're working if you're if you're working along with uh, somebody who works in the fields and they're spraying pesticides, then obviously you're going to get much more affected than if you just ingested a food that had some pesticide. Now that you have more knowledge about this issue, it is up for you to decide for yourself. Would you rather avoid these chemicals or continue to ignore them? Thank you for joining us today. I'm Danielle Smotrich. And I'm Kristen Fuller. And, and remember, remember, awareness is key. key.